can we use fair trade to benefit small countries as well as preserve, preserve our own economic interests? Does fair trade benefit smaller nations to begin with? And is it at the, at, at the expense of American interests? If you're a small country, uh, you can't, you really need trade because you can't produce everything yourself. It simply doesn't make sense. They're in a, a race to, to see who can have the lowest wages, and you've seen industries literally migrate from country to country to country as they seek uh, cheaper wages. So you've, uh, industries that were in Massachusetts migrated to Appalachia, migrated to East Asia, and have now moved on to places like Bangladesh. Um, where were these people without trade? Uh, they, they don't really have a choice. Trade is very beneficial. The problem is how do you manage it? What do you produce? And for the United States, how do you avoid uh, having literally all of your production move offshore, either to China in the case of actual production or uh, South India, Bangalore, if you're uh, talking about software uh, support? Um, it's a qu you can't really fight against free trade but you've somehow got to manage it, and it's a terribly difficult, uh, difficult problem, not only for small countries, but for large ones as well. Congressman B. B. Ryder, does fair trade benefit these uh, lesser developed countries? I think the first thing you have to uh, recognize is that there is no such thing as fair trade. It's a hypothetical or theoretical term. It does not exist. Every country has limitations of some kind uh, on its markets. But moving towards trade liberalization, I'd prefer to talk about it that way, can be very beneficial. In fact, it's essential for developing or LDC countries. Trade liberalization can definitely benefit smaller countries, and the United States can protect itself in the process, but basically it's a matter of sorting out who can do the production of services and goods the most economically. And then we'll have to protect those citizens who are displaced by the loss of jobs. That has to go with it to be fair to our own citizens. There's a fair amount of hostility toward NAFTA among uh, manufacturers and probably people in agriculture, and, uh, and quite a bit of anxiety about the WTO. And one thing that I, I think people would feel better about would be if the rules are being followed. Uh, for instance, Canadian Wheat Board uh, violated NAFTA. Uh, we have initiated a lawsuit against the Canadian Wheat Board, and uh, of course, the European Union has has refused to take beef that has been exposed to hormones for a number of years, and they've been fined. The WTO has said this is a violation. You know, the, the, you know, there's no nothing wrong with U.S. beef, and so what they have chosen to do is to pay a fine. And I don't know what it is, 110 million or something like that, and so it's kind of a a, um, a cheap tariff is what it is. What we saw happen with NAFTA and also in Mexico and to some extent, a lesser extent in Canada, is that the barriers against American products were reduced. So how do you compare what would have happened if nothing had happened, no, no agreement, with what did happen? Well, you have to realize that those jobs were going to go to Asia and other low income, low, low production areas. And what we did with NAFTA is slow it down. Uh, some, there are losers and winners in a trade agreement, and we have to make sure that those people who are losers have a way of resuming their life with uh, retraining and so on, particularly people who are in middle age or older. Uh, and perhaps we haven't done as good a job of, of that as we should. This part of the country, of course, has benefited tremendously. Uh, the amount of corn we sell today has gone up precipitously, you know, like over 300 percent to what we now export beef and veal not so much, but also dramatic increase of what we now sell to Mexico. And soybeans, we sell twice as much as we did before NAFTA. So this is a part of the country that really, in an economic sense, has benefited most with respect to increased Mexican-American trade. Lisa, what's the, is the state of Nebraska taking on direct initiatives to try and uh, protect Nebraska uh, industrial interests? that may be drawn away from uh, to, to other countries? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but what we're trying to do is differentiate ourselves, I think, a little bit instead of um, doing the same old, same old. Nebraska was a victim of selling its labor as cheap labor for a long time to industry. And instead of um, selling ourselves as quality or, or um, 
for a higher value added uh, product, we sold cheap labor. And then, you know, Mexico took some of those jobs, and now we're seeing Mexico lose jobs to to other organizations. Um, the state itself is working very hard to find where the niches are. Um, is it if it's not, particularly in agriculture, if it's not commodities, then what is it? Well, it's going to be some sort of value added that can also be exported and still have great value. For instance, maybe it's cracked corn going to um, Mexico for all the poultry operations that they have there. That would just be one example.